So thank you. Uh, yeah, my name is uh, Nico Sakelaridis, working with uh, Diamond Research, and uh, I would like to present to you a um, uh, co-simulation pilot that uh, we run with uh, battery supplier Corvus. Um, we will present our experiences on uh, a use case um, regarding the effect of energy management strategies um, on the on a battery hybrid vessel uh, performance. So, yeah, why we chose this topic? And this is uh, quite a challenging task to predict battery lifetime in realistic uh, conditions. So many things uh, come into play here. Uh, the design of the vessel, the power plant design, sizing of the battery, uh, but also the real world operation, environmental conditions, and how the energy management strategy, so the system that controls um, uh, the suppliers, how supply meets demand, uh, has an effect on the battery lifetime. So it was a good uh, test case. And models of sufficient accuracy are needed to be able to resolve this effect. So this was, uh, yeah, this was it chosen to be the test case, the pilot case. Um, there is a trade-off between uh, uh, various things here. So the battery lifetime fuel consumption and co-simulation helped us identify uh, these, these trade-offs. The, the contents of the presentation, so first, what were ambitions were as we set out uh, to do this work, the methodology that was uh, uh, developed and applied, a uh, brief description about uh, the models, then we go into the results to see what type of results can be obtained by models of sufficient accuracy in, co in eco simulation environments and the insights that, that, that can be gained, and then we, we end up with uh, conclusions. So regarding the ambitions, uh, we had close uh, collaboration with uh, Corvus uh, uh, and uh, through this project, the, this collaboration was fostered. Uh, we wanted to demonstrate a new uh, model-based way of working using FMUs, so black box, uh, black box model within a safe environment um, simulation trust center uh, hosted by DNV. Uh, this is uh, the, uh, the topic of safety. safety is very important because uh, we used expertise of Diamond in vessel modeling. So, uh, um, yeah, the, 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 the propulsion system, the energy management system, also battery uh, uh, used experience in, uh, also Corvus used experience in their battery model. And this type of models yeah, have all this uh, experience and knowledge behind it. It's very uh, important that uh, intellectual property be uh, preserved. Um, then we joined those models within Simulation Trust Center and we, uh, we compared the energy management uh, strategy effect on the lifetime and uh, fuel consumption and other metrics for a hybrid ferry test case. Yeah, that, <laughs> that was it basically. And then we go to uh, the approach to collaboration that was, um, that was applied first regarding the existing approach. It's more of an iterative process, so um, based on uh, the expected uh, sailing profile of the vessel, energy analysis is performed, fuel consumption is um, estimated, also the loading of the battery, then this is provided to, to the supplier. The battery is sized, lifetime is uh, estimated the heat rejection, uh, battery losses, etc. Depending on the initial assumptions, this might go on in a loop until it sort of uh, converges. These loops are time consuming. Every time data is exchanged, there is possibility of miscommunication. So in this pilot, uh, we, uh, we tried the co-simulation approach. So uh, it's uh, yeah, a, a linear process with a sailing route uh, as an input. Diamond made uh, vessel propulsion and EMS uh, models joined with um, uh, Corvus battery model within Simulation Trust Center. This is a little bit of a front-loaded process, so there is, uh, there is time needed to develop and check the models, but once uh, 
once this is done, it's quite a streamlined process. It implicitly inc includes system level effects and end of life effects because the models are are close, closely coupled. Then with, um, for example, version control uh, of the models, uh, there is a transparency and traceability regarding the result. Uh, and uh, we showed, let's say, the, the vision for the methodology. And on the right hand side, you see the actual implementation. So we have uh, the uh, diesel electric uh, ferry model created by Damon connected to uh, the Corvus battery model. Uh, the, the models are uh, a couple, so battery current goes to the battery model and the ferry model takes feedback signals, the voltage and uh, the state of charge from the battery model. And uh, yeah, in, uh, these models were implemented in Simulation Trust Center. FMUs were created out of these models. Uh, they were connected. Scenarios were defined within the Simulation Trust Center we run very long simulation so we tried days uh, but uh, for battery life I'm going to need years. It was uh, due to good uh, let's say collaboration when defining the model the interfaces uh, it was largely plug and play there was uh, there were of course some hiccups especially when you simulate uh, many many years uh, in a calculation that has a time step that needs to be able to resolve also uh, some some transits but uh, yeah, it was largely plug and play, so we were we were happy about this. Uh, a little bit about the vessel model. Uh, the propulsion layout was uh, was uh, model. So you see two DC switchboards fed by two generators. The battery packs are also connected to to the switchboard. Some uh, hotel loads. Uh, um, also, short connection is available. Uh, uh, so short power basically for this uh, for this uh, ferry, uh, the, um, uh, and then the, we have the electric motors so that, that drive the thrusters for the propulsion. So the propulsion layout was basically uh, modeled within Simulink. You see the various inputs and outputs of the model. The inputs, as we said, battery voltage, state of charge. These are for uh, for um, uh, yeah, interfacing the battery model with the vessel model. There is also the energy management strategy. So we tried different options, root number, the amount of short power. In this work, we, we do not consider any short power. Uh, so it's always uh, zero. And the outputs are uh, the current to go to the battery model and uh, different KPIs to make, uh, to help us, uh, let's say, gain insight. Um, Initially, when we created uh, the model in order to export to FMU, of course, we used uh, um, uh, we used a simple battery model, uh, and we uh, one part th that is important in co-simulation is to to be able to see to think ahead what could go wrong. Let's say because debugging uh, can be quite a challenge uh, in these cases, so the mod the models need to be kind of uh, robust and behave gracefully under all input uh, scenarios. Uh, speaking about energy management strategy, I will, uh, I, I will uh, tell you the cases we considered, which are basically, uh, yeah, they could be seen as limiting or ideal cases of energy management. So first is the battery leading strategy. In red is the generator load. So it's a on-off uh, start-stop, let's say, strategy for the generator. The the battery is depleted until one predefined threshold. Then the generator starts, the battery is charged, uh, the generator stops. We have full uh, electric sailing. Uh, yeah, we, we can see that the, uh, we will see from the results that for full electric, this is a very intense, uh, it cycles very intensely the battery. Uh, and also the battery was uh, a little bit small for full electric operation, but uh, yeah, this is like the worst case scenario from the battery side, but uh, it could be beneficial if the uh, generator operates at a good, uh, at an energy efficient point. Um, and the generator leading is a very simple strategy. Throughout the day, the generator starts at the end of the day. Uh, 
stops, uh, sorry, starts at the beginning of the day and stops at the end of the day, and then the battery just takes the rest. When there is surplus power, the battery is charged. When there's a peak in demand, the battery is, uh, is discharged. So these were the, the, the two scenarios um, that were considered. Uh, regarding the routes, there were four routes that we used in this study, but here we will focus on two. We call them A, B, C, D in this work. Uh, a is a low power and um, low energy demand route, so it's a mild route, let's say. D is uh, an intensive route, high power and high uh, energy demand, and we also did the first check of the model versus measurement. Uh, so this is a, the cumulative energy consumed during a day. Uh, red was the measured, it's difficult to see here. Uh, and the uh, blue line is the calculation when we use the measured speed profile. We said the input is the selling profile. So we got a good result. We, we wanted to see, yeah, let's say the uh, confidence interval of the results. So this was uh, an additional check we did. Uh, and then going to uh, a little bit into the results. So regarding the state of health for the mild uh, route, uh, the battery leading strategy leads to a uh, shorter uh, lifetime compared to the generator leading strategy. This would be uh, expected uh, basically, but uh, it's also interesting to see that the D route, the more intensive one, uh, the, the same strategy leads to a slightly higher lifetime. Uh, one could, let's say, by intuition, uh, assume that yeah, more intense route, uh, less battery lifetime. But uh, uh, yeah, one of the insights was that uh, this is not always the case, basically. Uh, and uh, finally, the gap between battery and generator leading, so uh, the start, stop, and the always on uh, strategies, is for the more intensive route is more uh, is less uh, pronounced than the gap uh, on the more mild uh, route. Uh, regarding the fuel uh, consumption, uh, so the more more demanding route. Uh, the fuel consumption is basically the same between the two uh, between the two strategies, but uh, in the in the less demanding route, we start off with uh, almost four percent uh, fuel consumption benefit for the battery leading the start stop. But by by using models of sufficient accuracy, we can see the degradation throughout uh, the lifetime. So this benefit is uh, is reduced. So this is one uh, insight that how cost simulation helps uh, the process. So considering only beginning of life, it is overestimated the benefit. With end of life underestimated, having the uh, entire history gives us a better picture. Um, and uh, yeah, finally, another system level effect by having closely coupled models is the start stop of the of the battery leading strategy. So um, let's uh, take route A, the mild route. So we start with a number of start stop, but as, as battery degrades, this number of start stop increases and increases, which increases the cycling of the cycling of the battery. So kind of a snowball uh, effect can be captured in this uh, simulation. We see this, uh, these interactions uh, can only be resolved by models that, are, that have the, the relevant physics. These models are not very easy always to directly share. So cost simulation within a safe environment is an enabler for these type of studies. Uh, then we, we dove a little bit deeper. So we mentioned initially about trade-offs between battery life and fuel consumption, and we will see in a kind of simple case, such a trade-off for route A, the mild route, the battery leading uh, strategy. So the start-stop uh, strategy. What we did here is uh, in the initial uh, calculation, Battery was being charged at uh, a load of about 75% for the generator. Around this point was uh, the best efficiency point for the genset, but we uh, reduced this uh, loading point uh, to, to 65 and 55 and observe how battery lifetime is affected. 
And uh, we saw a significant uh, increase in battery lifetime as uh, we reduce the loading on the generator. So 25% um, more battery lifetime when we reduce from 75 the loading to 65 and 90% more when we reduce to 55. But um, of course, fuel consumption will suffer. So the, there is the, the trade-off. Better battery lifetime, worse, um, worse fuel consumption. So regarding the effect in fuel consumption, we have on the, on the y-axis the, the daily fuel consumption during this parameter sweep, and uh, on the x-axis the battery lifetime. When we have 75% uh, loading on the generator, we have the least, uh, at the beginning of life of the system, we have the least uh, fuel consumption, uh, but also the shortest uh, lifetime. When we reduce the loading of the generator, because we move the generator to a less efficient uh, operation, we, uh, yeah, we take a hit on fuel consumption, but battery lifetime is increased. And uh, if we reduce the generator loading more, the fuel consumption jump is quite significant here, but also the battery lifetime. So it becomes, uh, this is the, the, the beginning of life condition, the green chart. But w what about the end of life? We saw that the fuel consumption um, is affected also by the battery condition that we were able to resolve in this uh, work. Um, so we see it clearly, we can increase battery life at the cost of fuel consumption and vice versa. Uh, and uh, the final uh, question, how is battery, how is fuel consumption affected, affected by, by battery state of health? So what happens at beginning of life and end of life condition? And uh, finally, this is the previous graph at the beginning of life, the trade-off between uh, battery life and fuel consumption. And we saw the increase as a result of, uh, of uh, battery degradation. So at uh, high charging rates for the battery, uh, the jump in fuel consumption is more significant. Uh, and as we uh, reduce the generator loading, so we charge more smoothly the battery, the battery is both cycled less, uh, so less start stops and less intensely. So uh, the detrimental effect on fuel consumption is uh, also less. This was one parameter in a problem that has many, and still it's not clear what is best because there are so many things uh, um, to consider, so we did one last uh, thing. Uh, yeah, first of all, we saw that fuel consumption is increased as we accumulate operating hours, but how to decide what is best from all these results. Uh, this approach and the fact that we have uh, the whole uh, profile from beginning of to end of life allows to make uh, to bring everything together in a single KPI, so total cost of uh, ownership based on the fuel consumption, which is a model output. Maintenance, so we have the loading of the, of the generator, we have start stops, we have the operating hours as output. And uh, we have the battery life, so the depreci depreciation can be uh, estimated. So, for example, a selection can be made on uh, the basis of, uh, of total cost of ownership. Again, I, I want to remind you this was uh, a very simple one parameter sweep and its impact uh, on the system. Uh, so uh, if we wanted to, let's say, um, yeah, a, a rigorous optimization process would be very, very powerful here to, to find the best solution with many, parameter, many parameter variation. This was a very, very simple case that uh, we showed here. Uh, uh, finally, a, a summary of the um, results. Here is the battery life. Uh, gray is a neutral situation. Uh, moderate, uh, moderately favorable and favorable are the shades of green. One thing that we can see for all the routes, the battery leading strategy uh, cycles the battery very uh, intensely, as we said. Uh, and there's also a relatively small battery capacity uh, for uh, for full electric sailing, so it results in 
let's say the baseline uh, lifetime, which generate or leading having from very significant to significant uh, benefits in lifetime for all the routes considered. Um, for the heavier routes, uh, the here is the fuel consumption benefit of the battery leading strategy, so the start stop. We see for the heavy routes, uh, we have similar consumption for both, uh, both strategies. Um, and for the more mild routes, we saw here we have a benefit of the battery leading that starts off strong and then diminishes at, as battery degrades uh, towards end of life. Uh, regarding now conclusions, so uh, what we set out to do and what was, uh, what was done. We had a close cooperation and collaboration with uh, Corvus to define the model interfaces input output and this resulted in a this resulted in a almost plug and play uh, application within simulation trust center so uh, we were very uh, let's say satisfied with uh, with this uh, we demonstrated in a pilot co simulation application a new um, way of working together with suppliers using models of um, of uh, increased accuracy within a safe environment. We gained experience and insights in uh, the co simulations and what could be gotten out of it. We were able to capture uh, system level interactions by closely couple, coupling the model within the co simulation uh, environment. And it is uh, an enabling technology in these type of, types of studies because of um, yeah, because it, it, it allows uh, to preserve the IP while also uh, uh, using models of increased uh, accuracy. And uh, finally, we were able to see the trade-offs between, for example, fuel consumption and uh, battery lifetime, how it is route dependent and what potential for optimization uh, and tailoring the strategy for each route uh, exists. Uh, one thing that has not been done, and it's uh, uh, it's uh, for follow-up uh, studies. Uh, what is uh, we said already, the battery was quite uh, small, especially for full electric sailing. What is the potential for full electrification? What is the effect of increasing battery size in the results that we saw before? So more and more uh, parameters can be uh, investigated and come into play. So the, the problem becomes very very complex in this case. Uh, yeah, and uh, some general discussion. Probably I will hear a lot more during this conference, but uh, for us, uh, uh, yeah, debugging could be a challenge in this case because, uh, uh, because of the black box nature of the models. Uh, so, yeah, in, for the cost simulation application before exporting the FMU, we really had to think what could go wrong, how could the inputs from the other model look like and make sure that the model uh, behaves uh, in a graceful manner in these cases so the simulation can be uh, at least completed and uh, yeah we still need to to see what are the best practices when making a model intended for co-simulation uh, application uh, yeah how to stop the simulation when uh, a parameter reaches a threshold for example these were time domain simulations so yeah, when battery is state of health, the simulation stops. Uh, this could save some uh, runtime. Or, uh, uh, as we said, in the um, uh, if we see the the problem in its full complexity, uh, generally we know optimization is very powerful and it exists in many, uh, let's say, simulation platforms uh, as a built-in feature. And how to interface uh, co-simulation with uh, with optimization would be an interesting um, point to see. Uh, yeah, that was that was it. And uh, thank, you. thank you, Nikos. We'll leave your microphone on in case there's questions. I I have like a million questions. It's very interesting. Could you uh, just quickly go back to the slide before? This is a slide that made me very happy because this is a wish list for OSP. The third one, we're actively uh, writing on a research proposal right now to go in that direction. And the second one, as well as your first point, I think was very interesting, at least for me to hear and get input on. What questions and comments do we have?
Yeah. Sorry, sorry, I have to repeat the question. So the question was, uh, has he considered or have they considered genset downsizing and see how it affects fuel consumption? Uh, yeah, we uh, we haven't done the calculation. So this was a pilot, so it was not uh, uh, about getting the global insight of the system, but to demonstrate it and see what, what we can get out of it, basically. But uh, yeah, this is one of the points that could improve fuel consumption. Because yeah, downsizing, you move the load point, like you have the same uh, actual load, but at a more favorable BSFC point. So yeah, but we haven't, uh, we haven't done this calculation within uh, this work. Yeah, this so this is battery battery uh, lifetime models are typically made. The question was was uh, battery life size. Battery lifetime models are typically made for a specific use case in mind. So the question was, how can you generalize that to a broader set of of use cases, or have you done so? Uh, for this particular test case, this is based on uh, a real vessel. Uh, the battery model was made for the uh, battery existing on this real vessel. So this is a a consistent, uh, yeah, test case with what you, yeah, so it's, uh, uh, of course, yeah, we cannot then generalize different battery uh, chemistries or, uh, but for this test case, the model describes the battery that exists in the real application, so. Yeah, so really, you already had the vessel, you had the battery, and then the task was to optimize what you already had. Yeah, it's, it, it was basically uh, based on a real test case. I don't know who was first. Which type of battery did you use? Uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure. I can mention, uh, let's say, probably a big one, huh? Uh, eh? Yes, <laughs> quite high capacity. Uh, yeah, basically one, one of, uh, from the product lineup of uh, uh, Corvus. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, there are different uh, products so, uh, for di with different, uh, let's say, uh, specs. So uh, uh, I'm not I'm not sure wh which one this was. So I, I know the name of the product, but I'm not sure the exact, uh, let's say, intended application for for it. <laughs> Sorry, that was a quick follow-up question for the people online. Um, if it was optimized for with respect to power um, output, please. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. We we kept a, for for these uh, other uh, parameters that could affect battery lifetime. We just kept a consistent set throughout all the calculations, and we varied uh, one parameter. But these are, are taken into account in the models. So the the question was if environmental uh, effects were taken into account. So if I understand this correctly, you held you had for example temperature you held constant throughout all simulations or you had a constant temperature profile for the routes? Constant temperature. Constant temperature. Yeah, for, yeah. For, for the battery room, for example. Yeah. Yep. Who owns the data and the results and can somebody use it without a problem? Excellent question. Yeah, uh, maybe th this question needs uh, uh, to be answered better by uh, by uh, yeah DNB hosting this uh, uh, platform. <laughs> That's a good question, but I, I, I'm not sure. Uh, let's say about the answer. So yeah, we have uh, uh, Klaus uh, has a few words. I'm just kind of hooking up with the microphone. Um, in the meantime, maybe if I allow myself to ask a quick question. Uh, Nikos, so this was two models that you built the code simulation out of, is that correct? Yes. The vessel with the subsystems you need on one hand, yeah. and then the battery on the other. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah it was from an uh, interface point of view, it was not very, very uh, complex, so one signal was being uh, transmitted between the two models and some feedback, but uh, the models themselves are quite uh, complex, so we demarcated the system. Right. But, we will but, do uh, this. 
this will be done and, by. And since Tom had full control and knowledge of everything that was going on the vessel that was relevant, it made sense to. It doesn't makes no sense to split it up. Then you just have one vessel model. Yes. And you have the battery model yeah. integrated with him. He's close. Just one uh, say comment or maybe an answer to the question regarding the ownership. Um, the simulations that you had done, um, uh, you conducted them on the DNV Simulation Trust Center, and they say the core value proposition of the of the Simulation Trust Center is is not exactly to 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 be the best engineering tool, or the best simulation tool, but to facilitate trusted collaboration in between stakeholders. So, um, in this case, Corvus uh, did not actually provide the model to you as a consumer of the model, but only granted access uh, to that model. So the ownership uh, stood with Corvus. And Corvus, uh, it's it's up to Corvus also to decide to uh, what happens with the model and to what degree um, uh, the one using the model, in this case you, uh, Darman, um, is allowed to use it. So, and when it comes to the data that is being generated, that is at first instance your data. Uh, so the, uh, it's the, the, uh, the ownership of that data is with the one who owns the project that generated the data. And, and that is uh, secured. So there is no, um, uh, nothing like say publishing data or something. So it's, it's really stored in the, uh, in the data fabric, uh, which is behind the simulation trust center and the ownership is clearly with the one who created the project. And as a as a model provider, you you are in control of say granting access, and 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 you you would control who uses your model in what kind of simulations. I hope this answered yeah, the yeah. question. <laughs> Thomas, you have something to add? And I guess you would like your microphone for it. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Typically, what you have to say is worthwhile. So yes. So, so you can hear me now. I can't even put this thing on correctly, so let's see. Um, I think the open simulation platform, at least so far, is often discussed in uh, terms of uh, DNV's uh, trust center. Um, but the open simulation platform is more than that. Trust center is just using the two uh, the building blocks that are provided by uh, OSP. And uh, when it comes to open, the word open doesn't mean that your results are open to everyone, that you have to share everything. It means that the uh, core uh, master simulation algorithm implementation called libcolsen is open for everyone. It's open source. You can take it, build on it, build something, build it. your own trust center if you want to, your own simulation environment. Uh, and you can also look at the code, you can modify the code, you can uh, take it and do, do what you want um, with respect to the licensing we put on it. And that's what we mean by open. So not as in open as you have to share what you're doing with everyone, but open as in open source software. Thank you, Thomas. We'll meet Thomas again right after lunch break. He's got a presentation then as well. I have one last question. Um, well, this was a lot of talk about battery degradation. I'm no battery expert, but I think I know why that was a concern. What about generator degradation or the degradation of the the dirty way of generating power? Do you simply assume that at the years we are looking at here, there's basically no degradation yes. worth noting in a generator? Yes. Yeah, so assuming uh, we can estimate let's say maintenance uh, costs based on running hours and other parameters, but uh, uh, regarding the energy efficiency of this generation method, it was assumed to be uh, constant for this study. Which seems to be a, a good approximation on these time scales. Yeah, well, depending on the, <laughs> on the maintenance, but if it is brought uh, regularly to a good condition, then yeah. Yeah, it's, it's also for a, for a combustion engine, it's a quite uh, challenging to... Uh, yeah, because we must not forget also combustion engines can break, obviously, they also have a lifetime. Yeah, yeah. We, we might yeah, have my, an online question, so just hold on a second. My, my background was combustion engines, so... Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. awesome. I'm aware of how they can... 
Well, the question um, uh, came in. Uh, is the mathematical formulation for each component shared between stakeholders? The mathematical formulation, so like the, the, the details of uh, the model, if uh, the Corvus share with us or we with Corvus. That's how I would understand the question. Yeah, uh, this is the point of black box uh, model, right? Because in our model we have uh, things that are uh, dumb and IP, like resistance or uh, factors that are needed to find the propulsive power and Corvus has uh, similar things in their model. So uh, these are not, uh, the methodology is not shared between the stakeholders, just the, the models, what inputs and outputs they need to have in order to properly function. Would you maybe mind us going back to the slide? I think you showed the inputs and outputs and we can show people um, what that looks like. Because then you've basically, uh, you've got the vessel model, all of this is hidden. Yeah, all, 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 all this is hidden in within the this box, uh, box. Within this box and then the battery model, there is no, on the level that you were using it on, none of the internals of the battery model are shared. The mathematics that might be going on there, for example, right? Uh, yes, these were not shared. So you have, uh, so if I read this correctly, the battery current goes into the model as an input. Yeah. And then voltage and, those and are state of charge back come out. to the vessel model in order to. Uh, right, but yeah. the actual calculations of how those outputs are produced from the inputs is yeah, nothing to be shared that remains these, uh, with core. These are hidden. Yeah. Yes, those are hidden. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.